New Thinking Aloud is presented by the California Institute for Human Science, Mind Body Spirit University, a leader in fully accredited in person and online U.S. college degree programs in the topics we cover here. Visit their website at cihs.edu. Hello, this is Dr. Jane Thinking Aloud, conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello, I'm Christopher Naughton. Welcome to New Thinking Aloud. I'm proud to be working alongside longtime host Jeffrey Mishlove, co-host Emmy Badness, and some other great guest hosts here at New Thinking Aloud. Well, Mark Twain is purported to have said that history doesn't repeat itself, but it likely rhymes. Whether he said it or not, whoever said it could have been referring to astrology, an intricate calendar system that counts the nature of time and how repetitive patterns may show up in history. My guest today is author and professional astrologer Nick Dagan Best. He wrote Uranus USA, Astrology Looks at the First Planet and Nation of the New World, where he takes an in-depth look at the cycles of the planet Uranus in the U.S. and other nations' astrological birth charts. He likens that the current time we are in right now rhymes with events in American history, such as the American Revolution, the American Civil War, and World War II. Nick joins us from his home in Cape Town, South Africa. Quick note right here at the top, I'm conducting a four-part seminar series with Leslie Keene, Danny Sheehan, James Tunney, and Alan Cohen called One Step Beyond, How the Paranormal is Changing Religion and Our Own Spirituality. For more information on that, go to ChristopherNaughton.com. Well, Nick Dagan Best, thank you for joining me here today on New Thinking Aloud. And we don't often cover astrological topics on this channel, which is kind of interesting since Jeff and Emmy and I and other hosts here have been into the high strangeness and the esoteric for many years. So maybe this is a good time to do it, especially as we round into what is going to be a very interesting election season. And I know we're going to talk about more than just the United States, but we'll kick off there and look at its various cycles. But I love what you share on your website about astrology itself, which is this. Astrology is a complex calendar system that assigns a unique value to every moment in time. It is the combined biography of billions of souls. It can serve as a tool for self-exploration and introspection. I just love that because cool. for thousands of years, really, astrology and astronomy were you know, wet at the hip, mm-hmm. and modern science came along and said, that's fantastical, it's superstition. Maybe we're coming back around to taking it a little bit more seriously. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um I mean, you know, uh, modern science still doesn't, but I think that's as things should be for, you know, uh, the time being un- until uh, astrology sort of proves itself worthy. Um, that's that's the way they are with each other. So we don't, you know, we don't need to expect special treatment. Um, but the, the part that you quoted me about astrology being a complex calendar system, I mean, for me, that's really the crux of it all. I think it's fair in many avenues to accuse astrology of being pseudoscience. Uh, there's certainly, you know, some of that 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 comes in naturally, uh, but there is nothing pseudoscientific about astrology insofar as it is a calendar system. Um, you don't need to believe in it to appreciate that. Um, what astrology really offers is the means to look at time and assign a unique value to every moment in time. And because because every planet has its own orbit, its own length of time that it takes to revolve around the sun, and therefore you can think of astrology as being like a clock that has ten hands that never tells the same time twice. With that, we have the means to you know look at look at ourselves, look at our relationship to time. Look at history, you know what uh, um, cycles of history, and 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 appreciate that we can we can look at the 16th century in an astrological context versus the 18th century, and so on and so forth. They each have their own unique character, their own unique astrological uh, uh, descriptions, and so on. That on those grounds alone, I mean, astrology is just fascinating, and 
Um, Nature moves in cycles, and even Native Americans used to see time as cyclical, going from seed to root to bud to fruit and then back to seed again. And even in American history, We've had, you know, great icons such as Thomas Jefferson and uh, Mark Twain and, and more recently Arthur Schlesinger Jr. and Arnold Toynbee and many others who have said history, time, moves in cycles. To quote Mark Twain, although he never probably said it, he you know, history it. <laughs> doesn't repeat itself, but it likely rhymes. I like it anyway, even it's though a great he probably quote. never said it. You know, when it, when I, I self published this this book, Uranus USA, that that we'll probably talk about, I wanted to use that Mark Twain quote uh, quote as a you know uh, uh, an intro for the book. Um, but that, then I went through every source I could find, and I couldn't find like you know I wanted to be able to attribute the quote, and that was when I realized, oh, okay, like this is just one of these. Uh, um, you know, internet uh, uh, quotes that just keep getting sent around and, and people start to believe it's true. It is a great yes. quote, and it sounds like the kind of thing he would say. It seems authentically uh, Twain-esque, but I just, yeah, I can't find it. If right. he said it, I don't know right. where it's written down. Well, we're going to get into Patrick Henry later because he was quoted right. as having said something <laughs> he probably never said, but it's That's the kind right. of thing he probably would have said. Exactly. Well, and the thing about Mark Twain is that he did say that history repeats itself because Mankind almost can't help itself, more or less. Mm. So, I mean, we're not the first ones to come up with this whole notion of history and time being cyclical. Yeah. And about uh, two months ago or so, I had Neil Howe here on the program. Now, Neil wrote the book with William Strauss back in 1997, The Fourth Turning, An American Prophecy, and Strauss has died in the interim, and, and Howe uh, has a new bestseller out called The Fourth Turning is Here. And in that book, he took, takes a look at primarily, not, not, not solely, but primarily American history. And he looks at it in periods of a, an average human life, what he calls a saculum coming from the Greek, which is between mm -hmm. 80 and 90 years. And he says that the United States goes through these turnings, four turnings within the lifetime of a person. And every 80 to 90 years or so, when it reaches that fourth turning or that particular cycle, America goes through an existential crisis. What I didn't get a chance to discuss with him, and I wish I had read your book beforehand, is that those cycles really line up almost specifically yeah. with the Uranian or the Uranus cycle in the American chart. It's very close. Um, the cycle of Uranus is 84 years long, the, the, what we call the synodic cycle. It's relationship relative to the sun. Uh, it, it does one full turn around the, the 12 signs of the zodiac in 84 years, spending seven years in each sign. Um, and so when I wrote this book, Uranus USA, it was only when I published the book that people started saying, oh, this is a lot like Neil Howe and, and William Strauss. I mean, just sort of an astrological version. Um, and so that was when I, I you know, started looking into their work. Um, I've got all their books and I've gone through them. I haven't read any of them cover to cover, but I keep you know, wanting to sort of uh, um, integrate more of their analysis into what I'm doing. Um, I mean, frankly, I think astrology, the, the, looking at the cycle of Uranus is a little more um, What's the term I'm looking for here? Uh, 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 it's a little more stratified complete? than, than the, yeah, complete okay. or, or 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 precise, I, I suppose. Uh, um, but it aligns very very closely with what they're doing, and and I do, I, you know, more than anything, I, I, I get a lot of uh, uh, their observations, their analysis of, of you know their interpretations of this cycle. Um, but yeah, as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're, they're doing astrology without really realizing they're doing astrology. That's the, you know, right. from my perspective, that's what I wish, again, I, I, wish I had had the opportunity to just throw that at Neil Howe. He's also, a, I think a hedge fund manager and you know, those guys are all into astrology, at least some, some of them are, they may not admit it, but be that as it may, if I have an be opportunity that to talk with them again, I'll bring up this Uranian cycle because again, it, it matches up virtually perfectly. Yeah. So um, the, the long and short of it is uh, what I put out in this book um, was the observation that uh, whenever Uranus transits through tropical Gemini, whenever Uranus mm. goes through Gemini, which is uh, again, for a seven year period, every 84 years, um, 
it has perfectly aligned with uh, um, in 1774 to 1781, the American uh, Revolutionary War, and then 84 years later, it was 1858 until 1865, uh, from the Lincoln-Douglas debates through to the end of the, the Civil War. And then um, from 1941 to 1949, basically uh, U.S. involvement in the Second World War until just before the Soviet Union gets the bomb. So it, it, it ends mm -hmm. with the United States still being the only superpower. <clears throat> the minute Uranus goes into cancer afterwards in 1949, the Soviets uh, detonate a bomb, and then the Chinese Revolution happens six weeks after that, and, and we're in it. You mm -hmm. know, we're in a cold, a real cold war. Um, and so, yeah, the, I mean, that alone was sort of striking. I'm used to doing this kind of work a lot. I think one thing I should explain to your listeners is um, the advantage I have as an astrologer in the 21st century over any of my predecessors um, is that, uh, you know, as of the late 1990s, astrologers have had computer software available to them that allows, uh, it allows me to, to cast hundreds, thousands of charts tens of thousands of charts mm -hmm. very, very quickly. And I have software that can do a lot of analysis that would have taken several lifetimes up until just when I started getting into astrology in the late 90s. Um, and so, you know, I have this, this computer database with a, you know, a file of, of, of events in American history that has several thousand uh, events and, and nativities, birth dates of, you know, you, you name, you know, all the presidents, lots of congressmen and judges and so, so on and so forth. And, and any event that you, you can imagine that's important in American history, pretty much. And then I can, you know, do all kinds of different searches for planetary configurations, planets going through certain signs, it's, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and with this file, I mean, very, very neatly, very cleanly, very quickly, I can demonstrate, uh, you know, a search for Uranus and Gemini pulls up these periods and, and demarcates those, those eras in American history very cleanly. Um, so I just wrote a book about that, about Uranus being in Gemini, about the fact that whenever Uranus is done with its transit in Gemini, when the transit ends, the United States emerges as a whole new country. It always redefines what the United States is, right? Um, the, the first, the Revolutionary War created the, the Union. Uh, the Civil War famously sort of centralized the Union. Um, and uh, and then the, the Second World War, you know, turned this sort of reluctant isolationist country into a global superpower somehow that that you know had its fingers in every pie. Uh, somehow that that you know magically sort of uh, uh, erupted over the course of that uh, uh, war and the and what followed. So with that in mind, um, when I put this book out in 2013, I did so knowing that uh, the next ingress, the next transit of Uranus into Gemini, would start in 2025 next year just about a year from now. And with that in mind, um, yeah, you know, I thought, I thought it was something that was worth talking about 12 years ahead of the game. That being said, um, at the time, um, you know, astrologers were, were trained to, we're, we're not supposed to go out there and be Cassandras, you know, in, in, in the astrological community, um, you know, uh, we're, we're here to help. We're not here to scare people. We're not here to, you know, make prophecies of doom. And, you know, I think that's always been a, a you know, a sound standard to hold ourselves to. Um, and when I put the book out, I mean, I, you, you've seen it, I, I sort of made it like a little graphic novel to, I mean, I'm not really an artist, but I made it a kind of artsy book and a little uh, lighthearted. Yeah, because well, uh, yeah, I serious mean, the, but lighthearted at the serious same time. Serious but light, exactly, exactly. It was almost you know kind of um yeah comical type of approach, and 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 it was really with this thing in mind. I didn't want to write some grim, you know, grisly, you know, uh, dark toned uh, uh, book about how you know the 2020s were going to be this or that. Um, but since then, I mean, that was 2013. You know. Um, Sure, we had the you know we had the tea party and the I remember the government uh, shut down for a little while at, at at some point you know there there was some trouble but it wasn't you know it was uh, uh, it was pre twenty sixteen so it was another era yes uh, and and yes. you know even though I, I'm an astrologer and I anticipated twenty twenty five being something you know close to what we're we're seeing um, in twenty thirteen it wasn't like I, I necessarily thought like oh clearly I can see this this um, this unfolding before me, I, I had some doubt, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, everything will be fine. <laughs> uh, uh, silly me. Um, but since then, we, you know, we've had Trump and especially COVID. COVID really changed. The, it was a sea change in the astrological community because when that happened, 
our audience, pe people who follow astrologers, were saying, "Well, you know, why didn't you? Why didn't anybody say anything?" <laughs> and it's not that we. I mean, we saw February twenty twenty had this this heinous looking triple to quadruple conjunction of Saturn. Pluto uh, and Jupiter, and then Mars joined in, and we knew, you know, February of 2020 looked grim. Um, and and you know, there was one astrologer who who wrote a couple of decades earlier that that 2020 would have uh, a pandemic uh, due to the, the, mm -hmm. the transits of that year. Um, but we weren't out there sort of talking about it again because we're not supposed to, you know, the the standard was we're not supposed to go out there trying to scare the hell out of people and and you know. All that stuff, but um, yeah, I mean, here here I am talking about it now in in more of sort of naked terms, uh, uh, precisely because well, you know, we're we're living in a world where, um, you know, people are just openly talking about the fact that the so you know, I almost called them the Soviet Union, the fact that Russia, you know, could very well you know set off a bomb or two or more, uh, uh, you know, in the near future. I mean, that's you know. That makes uh, 1962. Yeah, because again, these seem conflicts that you talk about, that you and, and Neil Howe and others have talked about, these yeah. are conflicts that can come within or without. Let me just back up for one second, sure. though. And again, for those who, who don't are not maybe really well versed in astrology, when we talk about the planet Uranus or Uranus in anyone's yeah. chart, whether it's an individual chart or a national chart, I mean, I've always heard, and, and again, I know enough to be dangerous, but I've always heard that Uranus deals with the unexpected changes, uh, shocking changes, uh, the freedom, originality, revolutionary events, etc. How do you see Uranus and how that plays out in a, na a nation's chart like the United States? Yeah, it. Uh, well, I mean, to be frank, I mean, an another uh, uh, delineation for Uranus is also technology. It has a lot to do with yes. modern technology. Thank you. And I'll even so go so far, this wasn't something that I... That really crystallized for me in 2013. But um, frankly, I think Uranus is also the United States of America. Um, the planet was discovered in England in 1781, just that literally within days of the um, Continental Congress uh, um, uh, finally ratifying the Articles of Confederation. Okay, like like mm -hmm. you, you know, Maryland was the holdout for two years. It, you know, it, it was all supposed to be a done deal in 1779, but it's not till 1781 that uh, um, I think Virginia. There was some kind of land dispute between Virginia and Maryland, and Maryland finally signed. And and then again, that's a, that's a, again where British did surrender to us <clears throat> here. And again, exactly. I'm, I'm here in Virginia Beach, Virginia, right up the road. Um, you, you know, the the British were blocked by the French fleet right outside my window here in the Atlantic Ocean. That's brilliant. And in 1781, the British surrender. And and then right. just months later, the Articles of Conf Confederation, which is a forerunner to our Constitution, you know, based on the Iroquois Confederacy, becomes yeah. a reality in this nation. It, yeah, it was actually a little. It was in March, and and uh, um, okay, the, the the battle was in October. But yeah, so the the, right. the articles preceded it. But it's still it's the same Thank year, you. and really the discovery mm -hmm. of Uranus in March of 1781 uh, by William Herschel. Who interestingly, when he first discovered the planet, it wasn't his idea to name it Uranus. He wanted to name it after his king George, the, the very guy that the <laughs> ah. Americans are fighting the Revolutionary War against. Mm -hmm. um, Uranus came about later. Um, that that wasn't up to him. In fact, it was called. Herschel at first. Uh, uh, that wasn't his idea either. But anyway, I digress. Um, Uranus does have to do with, with uh, revolution and unexpected things, but it also has to do with technology and, and personal freedom. And I think, uh, you know, culturally and technologically, I mean, this is why I say Uranus to me actually is the United States, because it really sort of signifies how the world changed with the completion of the Revolutionary War. Um, you know, like in, in another sense of things, I, I tend to think of, I can take a broad view of revolutions in, in modern history, starting, I mean, you, you could go back to the Glorious Revolution, which is sort of a precursor, but even yes. with the American Revolution, which really sort of changes the game, you know, outside just- Although I think know, Thomas Jefferson even said the Glorious Revolution, which again is an English revolution and basically religious, said this was our first 
revolution. Yeah. In other yeah. words, it, it really was what triggered the American War and, of Independence uh, 84 years later. Right. And and the glorious revolution happened in the in, in the late 1600s when Uranus was in Gemini, but I, <laughs> yeah. you know, 84 years there prior to the... So, so it, it does yeah. tie into that cycle. But if you think of the American Revolutionary War and, and, and what that triggers afterwards... Uh, the French Revolution, which triggers the Haitian Revolution. And then a bit later, you get the Greek Revolution. Um, eventually, you get Portuguese Revolution and a, and, a, and a Russian Revolution, which in turn inspires a Chinese Revolution and Cuban Revolution. And in some sense, this is all one event. You know, it's kind of like not unlike the way we look at the Crusades, which, you know, there's, there's well, I think, four of them and they're, you know, century apart or, or this and that, you know, we think of them being all one event, even though there's, it's a whole bunch of different events. Uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the same sense, I tend to think like the, this is all one big sort of, since we found Uranus, this has been the, the uh, you know, Pandora's box uh, uh, was opened and, um, or Prometheus, you know, lit the fire. Uh, um, that's, you know, and, and, and there's been no turning back ever since. Um, so yeah, I, I think Uranus really, you know, does signify the United States. And I mean that in a way that if I had Ronald Reagan and Fidel Castro sitting on either side of me, they would both agree with what I mean by that, if you catch my drift. Like it just, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, yeah. So yeah, and, and there's something about that cycle, clearly, when it goes through Gemini, um, something big happens in the United States. It involves a war. Uh, it involves a lot of people sort of feeling very differently about things than they did not longer before. I think that's another thing, you know, uh, the revolutionary war. I mean, none of, none of those revolutionaries were, were aspirational, you know, uh, uh, Washington and Jefferson and Adams, they didn't grow up wanting to, you know, uh, make American independent. That was something that sort of fell on them. Uh, and, and it was a conclusion they arrived at over the course of, of events when, when they determined that things were irreversible. Um, and similarly, I mean, you know, the, the, the Civil War, I think, you know, you, you can argue a lot of people were sort of uh, um, dragged kicking and screaming into fighting it, I suppose, you know, you know, um, I mean, there was some hostility, but I think, you know, more people wanted to uh, avoid it than, than, than not. And um, yeah, the Second World War, I mean, famously, I mean, America was very isolationist. I, I believe, I saw in one um, PBS documentary that the American army was training with guns that fired flour, like in 1939, like they had these wooden- I thought they were all wooden at one point in wooden, time. Wooden, wooden, yeah. Made, wo yeah. Wooden, wooden rifles, and then, yes, yeah, started using flour once they started having, bringing you know, rifles into the game. Right. I think yeah, what yeah. you're saying, Nick, is that America has had this great reluctance. I mean, you talk about being pulled into these revolutions, these yeah. wars, civil wars, these world wars. In each instance, again, Revolutionary War, Civil War, and World War II, America is, almost has to be dragged into it. And maybe even up to the last minute, mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know if this is going to happen or not. It's not like we were gung-ho from the start. You know, let's break away from England. Let's have a war against the South. Let's declare war on Germany and Japan. I mean, as you bring up and many other historians bring up, you know, when Japan bombs us, we must declare war. And then the Germans and Italians do us a favor by declaring war on us the next day. Not unlike how, you know, the game Lincoln played uh, at Fort Sumter, really, you know, uh, more or less daring the Confederates to attack him. And then, hey, they attacked me. What, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so, yeah, there, there, is, there is something to that for sure. Um, it, it, certainly the, the reluctance, I think, is, is, is a common thread all throughout. We are going to talk today about what may occur in the next a year or seven years as mm -hmm. Uranus uh, goes into Gemini again. We're going to talk about a couple of other countries and when they go through a Uranus sure. return in their chart as well. Uh, it may not be true of World War II, or we'll get to that in a second, that you know, Uranus and Gemini really bookends the revolution, yes. almost yes. pockets it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 1774, yeah. where again, 1781. we're seeing Crispus yeah. Attucks dying and I guess, I guess uh, Concord, Bunker Hill, etc., Ticonderoga, this is all early on. This is actually a year, year and a half before we actually declare independence. But it goes to 1782, which is basically a year after Yorktown, a year after the figurative surrender of the British. And now it's, I think it's at that time, I think the British actually officially surrender. Yeah. And then in 1783, I think uh, the, the Treaty of Versailles is, is struck. Yeah, the the so match, it's really bookended neatly. It perfectly. The 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 
the the magic it really is in March of 1782. That's when Parliament votes to end the war because they've just heard about Yorktown, which was six months earlier, and that's the the tail end of Uranus leaving Gemini. And yeah, by the by the time of the treaty being signed in 1863, Uranus has gone into to Cancer. Um, but but everything up and you know, including the British saying, okay, that's it, we're we're not going any further. Um, that that's all Uranus and Gemini, yeah. Um, so yeah, and, it's, and it's then, very tight. It's very, it's a very tight fit. It's it's remarkable in that way. Um, the the Civil War a little well. The Civil War is pretty tight, except it starts with the Lincoln Douglas debates and ends with the end of the Civil War. It goes from eighteen fifty eight to eighteen sixty five. So make of yes. that what, make of that what you will. And of course, bleeding Kansas has been happening in the mid eighteen fifties. Yes. So that's that's right. all Uranus and Taurus stuff that that you can sort of see as a. Um, a precursor to everything that follows, of course. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and of course, and again, as you said, and we'll get back to the World War II scenario, a little different there, although interesting because in 1941, uh, you know, Roosevelt is president. And, and of course, in that time period, we have World War II. And then, of course, as you mentioned earlier, that's when the Cold War really starts. Yeah. But let me go back, let me go to something that you, again, that, that ties all of these kind of conflicts together. And let's go to the, to the astrology one more time. Yeah. If you look at the leading voices of the American Revolution, the Civil War, and World War II, oddly enough, these guys are all Aquarians. Yeah, well, that, that's, another, that. that's another really interesting thing here. Um, now, um, Uranus, all the planets uh, have what we call a retrograde phase. When they get close enough to Earth that it almost it, it appears visually from Earth that they're going backwards, and so when when an astrologer is following a planet's path, you know it'll be it'll be moving and then it'll slow down to a stop and it'll make a little loop and turn around and go backwards. Um, and Uranus does this twice a year. It, it it'll stop and go forward. It'll stop and go backward, and it'll do so. The, so the, there'll be a particular day when it makes this station. And in astrology, when a planet makes a station. The astrologer considers that planet to be declaring itself, to, to be sort of expressing itself, if you will. Uh, um, something that's, that's signified by the planet will, will um, surface. And as it happens, when Uranus is in Gemini, it makes its direct station while the sun is in Aquarius, because they're the right distance. Um, and as it happens, um, in, in astrology, we, we use something called the solar return. I mean, we, you know, when you have your birthday, people say many happy returns. So a, a solar return is a birthday chart. And it's the chart we, if you're looking at a given individual and you want to see what their year ahead involves, you look at their solar return. And as it happens, um, Thomas Paine was an Aquarius. And in 1776, his solar return had Uranus making a station that day. And then in 1860, Abraham Lincoln is in Aquarius. And in 1860, his solar return had Uranus making a direct station that day. And Franklin Roosevelt, who was an Aquarius, uh, his birthday in 1941 had Uranus making a, a direct station that day. It, in, in Roosevelt's case, it was making a direct station in Taurus, but just before it's going to go into Gemini, you know, the, the direct station that's going to send it in there. But it's all, you know, quite, it, it, that's really striking because. You only have a one in eighty four chance of having a birthday where Uranus is stationing direct. It's something that each of us, if we live you know at least eighty four years will happen to us once. but it, the fact that it aligns for those three men at those specific years is another one of these really sort of striking details I find now okay, pain is you know wasn't president the way um Lincoln and Roosevelt were, um, but, but you know he he was the voice of the Revolutionary War. I mean, even Washington used common sense as a sort of, you know, Washington wasn't uh, you know the orator that that uh, uh, you know Lincoln would prove to be. I guess um, so. You know, Payne was the voice of the Revolutionary War, and Lincoln, besides being president, certainly was the voice of the Union. And Roosevelt very literally was on the radio. So yeah, there's there's something about that that. Um, that Aquarian being the voice of the cause, if you will, and and the fact that their birthday charts, you know, even even though I can't uh, I can't construct a proper horoscope for Payne or Abraham Lincoln, I don't know what time they're born, uh, but just knowing their birthdays is enough. Even just with their birthdays, I know that okay, like 
that's that's the day that you get that direct station. So yeah, there's there's some really interesting things like that. The the other thing that happens uh, that's interesting is the Gemini's who are involved. Like the, those Aquariuses are yes. all really imp- uh, uh, interesting, but there are some very interesting Gemini's involved in the, in these wars. In the Revolutionary War, uh, one one of the Gemini's is Patrick Henry, and Uranus is conjunct his son. You, you alluded to this earlier when he said something to the effect of "Give me liberty or give me death," but you know no one wrote it down. He's it, it was the kind of thing he would have said, and he said something to that effect or, or something like it. Uh, but it, regardless, Uranus is conjunct to son. But what's interesting is not only it's conjunct to someone he says that, but also he's elected president of the Virginia Commonwealth, the first president. And that's kind of like the proto presidency, if you catch my drift. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's the, the blueprint. Well, J- of- Virginia broke away and declared independence before the rest of the states, correct? Right. Correct. And, and, uh, they, they start the Commonwealth and they, they elect a president. So the, there's, there's this sort of, uh, fractal like, uh, uh, relationship between what happens in Virginia and then what happens later with, with the federal government. Um, and then, and then we go to, yeah, again, uh, we go to 84 and, years later and now we've got a, a famous Gemini. And again, we're talking about Uranus and Gemini, but now that plays off their son and maybe their own natal Uranus. And 84 years later, we have Jefferson Davis. Yeah, Jefferson Davis was a Gemini, and Uranus is conjunct his son right when they elect him the president of the Confederacy. I, I was going to say that mm-hmm. there was someone else in the Revolutionary War. King George III oh, yeah. was a Gemini. Oh, of course. <laughs> and yes. Uranus, Uranus was conjunct his son in 1778, right when Franklin got the French on board, to, to which is really what seals the deal, you know, uh, in terms mm-hmm. of the military. Well, I know some, some military historians say that they could have done it without France. I, I, I don't really get that. But anyway, whatever the case, no. that was when France comes on board and they certainly were useful. Um, so yeah, that's the, and, and as I mentioned, Herschel even wanted to name Uranus after King George III. Uh, but it, yes, in the, in the Civil War, Jefferson Davis was a Gemini who had Uranus conjunct his son. And uh, and I think he thinks he's the Patrick Henry in the situation, if you know what I mean. Like he, you know, as far as he sees himself, uh, um, that you know, uh, in a similar role. When we get to the Second World War, um, the, the the really interesting Gemini's in the Second World War to me are future presidents. Uh, uh, John F. Kennedy and George W. Bush are Gemini's who have Uranus make transits to their son, and they both distinguish themselves. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, Kennedy right on that transit. Bush quite close. Was it George as well. H W. Bu- George H W. Bush yeah, or George yeah. W. Bush? No, George W. Bush H. was w. born in yeah. W. was born in 1946. Yeah. He wasn't up to much. Right, 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 right. Um, there you go. <laughs> but but um, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, that the thing to remember about George H W. Bush, you know, when when Reagan was elected in 1980, you know, he was an actor who had played a, a college athlete and a war hero, whereas George H W. Bush. Actually, had been a, a, a college athlete and and uh, you know fighter pilot and and, and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, they they to- <laughs> they they chose the actor over the real deal. Um, but yeah, when 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 Bush is going through his Second World War, he also has Uranus conjunct his son. So I find that interesting. And then we're going to go to I, you know I know eventually you're going to want to talk about that other Gemini president, but I guess we'll we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> we'll get that yes, because there is there is there have another- only been there have only been three. One was JFK, one was HW, and then there's a third guy. And yeah, we'll get to it. Wow, him. yes, right. Uh, the former president and possible future president, uh, Donald Trump. That's right. And we're going to get, obviously, going to get to that. Um, but what I find interesting is that in addition to, again, uh, Uranus's place in the American chart and, again, the Uranus return, it gets juiced up quite a bit just recently after the eclipse, right around the time of the eclipse, Jupiter conjuncting Uranus in Taurus. That's only happened five times in the last millennia. And one time was 1858, which is the beginning of Uranus, right around the time of Uranus in Gemini. Mm -hmm. So it's a late conjunction in Taurus. That's right. And then again in 1941, talk to that conjunction, what it means and, and how that interacts with Uranus in Gemini in the American chart. Yeah, I mean, it just it, it happens. Jupiter Uranus conjunctions will happen in certain places and and repeat themselves eighty three years later, reasonably close. Um, and so there is this string of 
um, uh, Jupiter Uranus conjunctions that happen in Taurus every 83 years. So um, in 1941, it happened. And, um, you know, the, the Americans fought themselves fighting over whether or not they should send, um, you know, lend lease uh, materials to support Britain. And, um, you know, 83 years later, uh, um, Congress found themselves arguing again, you know, whether they should send lend lease uh, um, uh, you know, type support uh, overseas. So yeah, the, the, yeah, so we're yeah. already seeing you know some of that, obviously. Um, and yeah, uh, I mean the, the the transit of Jupiter and Uranus. Uh, you know, Jupiter tends to be uh, what we believe to be true. Jupiter's the, the the planet of 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 our values and and the things that that we you know that are sort of unshakable truths to us. Um, if you're religious, Jupiter is God. If you're an atheist gambler, Jupiter is luck. Not everyone has a god, but everyone's got a Jupiter. Everyone's got something that they're absolutely certain of, and um, mm -hmm. and so when you combine that with this 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 planet of of um, yeah, another thing about Uranus is it there, there's idealism there. Uranus has a sort of adolescent side as well, in the sense that it thinks of things in terms of ideals and absolutes, as opposed to its its counterpoint Saturn, which is you know the the, the old man yelling at the cloud and telling you to get real and all that. So you fuse Jupiter and Uranus, and and you, you get this. This tremendous explosion of of conviction of of um, um, you know people who are very very sure of what they're doing, and um, but that you can you can get at the same time that sort of that ne that that negotiation like where you're trying to win over uh, um, a debate you know someone someone that you're debating and 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 have the means to do that, which I think is is something that happened in both these instances in getting the, this kind of um, military support. You know you. You're, you know, you said also that you think of when you think of Uranus, you think of the United States. Isn't Uranus also ruled by 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 Aquarius? Well, that's that's a sort of modern convention. Um, it's it's okay. a tricky it's a tricky use of the word rulership because that word kind of took on a different meaning in the 20th century um, for astrologers, and it's one that I I don't really use because it's sort of um, the the, the other the, the, well mm -hmm. yeah i mean um the the the, <clears throat> the older definition for for rulership is a lot more useful uh, i find okay and, you know rather than use the same word to define two entirely different concepts um but i'll, I'll uh, what what i will say the reason the reason that that is said the reason that that you know came as an idea is um we do associate i mean aquarius is also a sign that that is associated with idealism and uh um you know sort of absolutes uh, um you know the, the the thinking of the greater good it's certainly it's the sign of the people as opposed to leo being the sign of the individual um so in that sense there there is a there there is a kind of um sympathy between that 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 sign and that planet um you know an association i suppose um but rulership means something very different it, it plays into a planetary hierarchy that um really the modern outside planets don't really fall into they they're they're powerful no matter where they go so the implication of rulership is um if if venus is in mars a sign of aries then mars you know has has some dominion over venus whereas if mars is in taurus then which is ruled by venus then venus has it's a it's a it's a sort of hierarchy scheme whereby any of the planets can dominate any of the others but uranus neptune pluto these are you know these bodies are just powerful no matter where they go but that's for another conversation you know, it's interesting, too, that, uh, again, in this Uranus return in the United States chart, uh, although there are co there's conflict and strife, generally, uh, both internal and external, it's also a time of great progress with spirituality, with technology, and also racial issues. Let, let's address it. Let, let's let, look at the racial issues first, mm. because it's, it's during that time period, 1774 to 1782, I think Vermont is not quite a is not a state yet. No, but and they are. I think, but they're they also fighting the British. They are fighting the British. But they're, they're also just, fighting the British. Yeah, Ethan the, Allen, Green Mountain Boys, and that exactly, sort of thing too. Exactly. They yeah. eventually do, you know, pile up and become a, 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 a legitimate state. But aren't they the first state to outlaw slavery? Um, yeah, um, and they even. I mean, it was it was quite. Uh, gee, I, it was. 
<laughs> you read the book more recently than I did, but um, it was it wasn't just that they outlawed slavery. Um, the, the you know it was it was fairly liberal for the time. But yeah, the um, you know that right off the bat, they they fought their own revolutionary war, sort of you know apart from the the the, the other thirteen uh, states, but uh, and and did eventually mm-hmm. join. And so that yeah, they they were working um, you know under their own. Uh, you know their their uh, their own auspices and and making their own choices. So yeah, um, and yeah, well, race that, that came is up an right issue. Away. Nevertheless, oh, I mean, yeah. irrespective yeah. of Vermont, race is never. I mean, sometimes we think, hey, all the thirteen states got behind it. You know, slavery was okay with them. A lot of our founding fathers were slaveholders, so it wasn't a big deal then. But yes. It was a big deal. I think New Jersey outlawed it. Uh, you know, it took them a little while. But I think early. 18- I think Thomas Paine yeah, early eighteen hundreds. Yeah, uh, I thought Pennsylvania did that earlier. I I, I don't know the they history may that have. Well, I thought Jersey I, was like eighteen oh seven or so, but it was still an issue as the country came together. Oh, I mean, sure. for yeah, those yeah, who no, have, absolutely, yeah. But I you mean, know, keep, for those who have read, go yeah. ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I mean, keep in mind, in the 1770s, you're still 20 years away from the cotton gin being invented. Um, so there's there's slavery, but the slavery that we think of, you know, fields of people picking cotton, that hasn't happened yet. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, they're, they're your laborers and they're, I mean, it's, you know, it's still slavery, it's still grim, but um, it hasn't descended into what we're going to see in the 19th century yet. Uh, nonetheless, yeah, right. I mean, Vermont does does abolish slavery, so you do have you do have that matter, you know, uh, coming up. And this is this is decades before the British Empire uh, does it, right? So you know that that marked yeah. the sea change ultimately in the 19th century. They, they did that. Uh, they they outlawed it in 1807. It became absolute in 1834. Um, so mm-hmm. Vermont is really really ahead of the curve. In other words, when they do that, I mean, it's they're, so they're, racial no issues as part of. Ear. Yeah. And so racial issues really are part of the American war for independence, but of course it becomes a much larger issue. It becomes the defining issue. Yes. No matter what those who, who have uh, extolled the lost cause for many years, mm-hmm. uh, it, it wasn't about states' rights unless it was about states' rights to own slaves. And so the civil war really becomes, that is the defining mm-hmm. moment, slavery. Uh, every American or most Americans know that, but it also plays a role right around the time of 1941 when America's military is segregated. But before Gemini, uh, Uranus leaves Gemini, it will, that military will be desegregated That's and right. that kicks off an, a bunch of interior conflicts for the United States moving forward. Yeah. I mean, th- there's a whole chain of events. Um, w- with the military being desegregated, they all get the same GI Bill. Um, now, th- the African Americans didn't flourish as much as whites did with the GI Bill, but it did, you know, did get a number of uh, black men uh, college educations and they started businesses and they started moving into nicer neighborhoods. And that's when um, you know, the, yeah, then, then you had the, the, the fight over desegregation, uh, uh, white people being in, upset that, that, um, black families are moving into their neighborhoods. And, and that, <clears throat> that is sort of a, and you know, that, that probably wouldn't have happened in that way or at that scale had it not been for the GI Bill. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I mean, mean that's, you know, right off the bat, that's, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, that's really basically a Brown versus Board uh, comes in the 50s, and then you've got the Dixiecrats. And, uh, but you really could not have of those events have occurred if military desegregation under largely under Truman hadn't taken place. So yeah. each of these, again, each of these Uranian cycles, if you will, or turnings, as Neil Howe might say, they are accompanied by, you know, progress or at least enlightenment, shall we say, when it comes to matters of race. What about spirituality and technology in these time periods? Can you can you touch on those um, before we talk a little bit about what's coming up here in yeah, 2025? I, well, I mean, um, you know, techno- technology, I mean, obviously, you know, what, when you have a war, um, the, 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 there's a lot of quick innovation that goes on, you know, right off the bat. Um, you know, certainly in the Second World War, um, 
Well, you know, my my favorite story is is Hedy Lamar, you know, uh, uh, getting a patent for this uh, 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 spread spectrum technology uh, that the military doesn't even wind up using until Vietnam, but it's the it's the you know technology that we have in our devices now, uh, or mm-hmm. that at least sprang that that into happening. Um, so yeah, the, you know, um, we we need our movie stars to to invent new technology for us. I, I don't know, Scarlett Johansson better get on it. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, and and certainly, you know, with the Civil War, uh, uh, you know, you have you have innovations with with uh, you know ships, with navy, um, and and you know the the guns and the way wars are radar. fought, of course, yeah, radar, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, um, yeah, Alan Turing, and of course he was British, but still, you know, breaking, yeah. uh, being able to break the German and the Japanese codes uh, were huge advantages. In fact, maybe Britain doesn't survive without that, and maybe we don't prevail at Midway. Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. And, and they rewarded Turing handsomely for that. Um, but, um, yeah, I, it's, it's just that I think, you know, under, under the, the sort of the desperation of war and, and when you have everyone sort of, um, uh, you know, working together in that way, you're just likely to get more innovation. Of course, we're, we're not even touching on the bomb, but, um, you know, that yeah. speaks for itself, I think. Astrologers uh, such as yourself um, don't sit here as prophets, but we do peer into the future. I mean, when yeah. you do a solar return chart, you're looking at what the indices are going to be in the upcoming years. And again, I think uh, anyone would say that you know we alone are the determiners of our fate. But if time is cyclical, um, it suggests again this this Uranus return in Gemini suggests it may not be for the faint of heart. Even though whatever we go through, the United States will redefine itself. Let's talk about both ends of that spectrum and yeah. what we're looking at. And specifically, we can name names. I think it's it's really yeah. okay to do that at this point. Sure, we're not a political program, but I think you know. Let let's state what the obvious is. And the yeah. Republican uh, nominee for president, Donald Trump. Um, I think he's going through his uh, Gemini. He's got Gemini and Uranus in his chart, I believe. What, he's going he's, through what the- he has. Okay, now here's the thing. He's got mm-hmm. this. He was born during a lunar eclipse. So the Gemini yeah. sun opposite opposite a Sagittarius moon. You know, the, in an eclipse, and the sun was exact was conjunct Uranus in Gemini when he was born. And even you know when I was writing the book, I was aware you know that he had that. I mean, I've I've been aware of, of his chart for years. It turns out he's uh, born about an hour and a half after my dad. And uh, <laughs> but, but my dad has a different rising sign, and he's like. Li- it, you could not find a man more different from Trump than him. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, y- you know, I've been reading about Trump since, uh, you know, in the 80s when I was in college. Uh, uh, Spy magazine used to rip on him all the time. I, I always read Doonesbury and they would make, f- you know, uh, Gary Trudeau would make fun of him. Um, so, you know, and I'd see him on talk shows and stuff. And I was aware of his chart. I'm aware of a lot of people's charts. Um, but, uh, you know, even in 2016, I mean, like a lot of people, I, I just didn't take him seriously. And even though I was aware, like, wow, he's got a really sort of, he's got a chart that's really plugged into the USA. I just didn't, you know, see it until he won. Um, but even then I was thinking like, like in 2016, I'm thinking, why would he win now? He's the 2024 guy. He's the 2025 guy. Why would he be winning now? That's, that's what's going through my head in 2016. And why I'm thinking mm-hmm. this just doesn't add up. This is too early. I don't get it. Um, and that was the problem. I was probably just thinking too hard. Um, but I was thinking, he's the 2024 guy. Why is it happening in 2016? Now I get it, obviously. Um, yeah, no, the minute 2020 happened and, and the, the minute you know Biden was declared the winner, um, I, I knew you know, for, for what, for whatever, it, you know, it's worth, I knew at that point, okay, you know, Trump is obviously the, the 2024 guy and that's all there is to it. Um, and, uh, you know, I started saying so publicly, uh, I think the first time I said so publicly was on the astrology podcast in 2022. And, you know, so some people pushed back. I'm not like, a, you know, I didn't say it as a, as a, you know, uh, I, I don't, I don't wear a red hat or anything like that. Um, but it was, you know, uh, uh, folks didn't think, you know, again, uh, um, you know, people were just not seeing it being a realistic thing. I think it's looking a lot, a lot more likely now. Um, mm-hmm. 
his his you know I, astrologically speaking, I got to say his chart looks like you know this this is his moment. You know uh, his his chart looks great in November, and um, his chart looks appropriately like for him, for better or worse, when when the inauguration happens. So you know, I'm not saying it's going to be. And Jupiter will. I think Jupiter goes into Gemini as well, right? Jupiter will con- be in Gemini. Jupiter will be conjunct his Sun on election night, so it's you know on, on top of wow. everything else. So even though mm-hmm. he would still be elected and and inaugurated a couple of months before Uranus goes into Gemini, you know the the bulk of that first term is is Uranus and Gemini, and all of this the, the term that follows it. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, and I'm not going to claim to to know any more than that because we're we're really heading into uh, um, weird new territory here. Uh, but I'm I'm you know I'm quite certain that he'll win. I mean, the funny thing is, um, back in 2000, when I was an astrology student, I was in an astrology class in New York City, and the 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 Bush Gore election was happening. Um, my, my teacher, Michael Luton, uh, said, um, it, and this has never left me, he said, when you're trying to pre- predict a presidential election, look at, at whichever candidate has the worst transits. And that's the guy who will probably win because the next four years are hell. They, you know, their hair goes gray and they, you know, uh, they, they destroy their health and all that, you know, so like, and, and, you know, I, having looked back, that really is something that stands. But even so, you know, Trump is having really great transits on the election and going w- with that old, wisdom you know he 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 wouldn't win uh but you know in many many ways i think this is very different um no other presidential candidate has has been trying to win an election so they can fight off all these you know court cases and what have you you know just sort of uh wipe them away with the stroke of a pen um you know although some things seem to be going he seems to have money again for instance uh you know other things are going his way um yeah you know even with that that wisdom which i think uh, you know as a rule is 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 sensible and has has been consistent um even that i don't think applies here you know i think you know he's just he's having a good day in November. I can't vouch that, you know, he enjoys life much after that, but you know, he 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 will have the satisfaction I think of of winning that election. And, and win prob- or lose though. Oh, go ahead. Oh, Nick, I'm, sorry. I'm thinking probably more so than he did in 2016. I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, he's been well, crying foul lose, since though, 2020. Would, I I was going to say he's been crying foul since 2020. Of course, we were crying foul in you know, a lot of people were in 2016. Uh, you know, because of the whole electoral college. I think this one is is more of a, you know, it's in. Yeah. I'm sorry. And ahead. win or lose though, win or lose, he he still um uh, I mean that influence, that Gemini influence still casts a shadow over, you know, that next seven year time period. Again, if we were to look at cycles, that's all we're doing. Yeah. Again, we can recreate the world as we want it. Uh, you know, I think Payne said something similar to that. Um, we, we have it in and, our power and to Neil begin Howe the world say over the same again. Sort of, yes, make yeah. the world over again. And, you know, I love what you have uh, pointed out in, in your book and in dissertations is that each time America has gone through this harrowing conflicts, that it comes out the other side new, renewed. Yeah. And if, yeah. if the United States is, you know, illustrative of the world and the progress that the world can make, each time the United States comes through, I love what you said about before the Civil War, we used to talk about these United States. Right. After the Civil War, we became the United States. That's right. So yeah, this is it, a pattern that comes through again. We go through these crises, but we come through the other side. And I know this next Gemini in Uranus cycle goes from 2025 to 2033. Yeah. Still a long time for <laughs> to have to go through something that may be difficult, in, whether internally or externally. It could be a war with Russia. It could be something internal. It could be both. But at the same yeah. time, coming through that uh, at the end of the 2033 cycle, something new about America emerges. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And and in this case it really powerfully um because it's it's only in in the year 2032 that Saturn joins Uranus and Gemini makes a conjunction. And those Saturn Uranus conjunctions are the things that really tend to unite parties that have been uh, uh, divided or, or sort of against each other. Um, there mm-hmm. was a Saturn-Uranus conjunction in Gemini in 1942, early in the war, and that signifies the United States and the Soviet Union, who had been 
you know, hostile to each other up until that point, coming together mm -hmm. to fight the Nazis. Um, uh, back the, the last time we had a Saturn-Uranus conjunction was the year 1988, which was a year where, you know, Reagan's going to Moscow to sign an anti-nuclear treaty. The war in Angola is ending. The Soviets are pulling out of Afghanistan. Iran and Iraq are ending their war. Everyone's, you know, but uh, we know apartheid's going to end by that point. So, uh, um, 88, the Saturn-Uranus conjunction was like, yeah, everything's sort of wrapping up. We're, we're all going to try to get along here. Um, and so you do get that in 2032. You do get some sense of uh, uh, collaboration, cooperation, even between parties who have been hostile. Um, so there's there's hope at that sense so that that we sort of see the end of Uranus in Gemini with some kind of uh, uh, coming together, as opposed to the Second World War, which started which with a coming together, and you know the 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 alliance held as long as it needed to, and then kind of uh, splintered. So. In, in that sense, you know, if, if I'm trying to sort of think ahead, um, I think I think in this instance, you know, since since the cooperation, the Saturn Uranus conjunction happens at the tail end, rather the the introduction of of the the the, the, the whole Uranus in, in in Gemini arc, that that you know, this this could end on a much more positive note than the Second World War did, which was with a lot of sort of foreboding really and and you know we were in this dangerous new world and suddenly nuclear bombs exist and all that so in that sense i have some optimism it's just that the, the we, we have to get from here to there and and you know obviously I, I i have some apprehension about you know how serious all that could be right you're just being honest with us that's all you're not yeah. even reading the tea leaves so much you're just saying here here's what's been and time is, is does have cycles but where's the hope i mean there would be that, people probably listening to this saying hey hey chris and nick are you yeah. guys even thinking this and promoting these ideas you're you're just you're just adding fuel to the fire you're just now i don't see it that way i'm just we're just speaking the truth as we see it yeah and but but we always remain hopeful um yeah, yeah. I, I love what neil ha had to say he says when People come up to me and say, you know, you're, it's, it's, it's doom and gloom. He said, the only thing worse would be is if this polarization just continued ad yeah. infinitum, yeah. uh, would that be satisfactory to you as an individual, to you as a nation? I mean, most fevers have a breaking point. Uh, there's usually a day of reckoning that comes out. We are as polarized as, you know, you've, I, you and I haven't said this first, we're as polarized as we've been since the Civil War. I mean, I yeah, just think that that's that a fact. And fascism is, is a real possibility. We're looking down the barrel of a gun with that, as far as I'm concerned, at least. So, yeah, yeah. so where is the hope, Nick? Give us some well, hope before yeah. we leave here today. That well, I mean that that's what I was alluding to with 2032 is is that Saturn Uranus conjunction. The fact that collaboration and cooperation happens toward the end, which which to my mind sort of speaks to a happier ending, uh, as opposed to the Second World War, which had a happier beginning, so to speak, like, you know, everyone's banding together and, and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, arsenal of democracy and, you know, send, send those tanks to the Soviets and, you know, pitch in and everyone's, uh, uh working together to fight Hitler. Um, so in, it, yeah, that, that's, that's the, it, it ends on a positive note. Um, and then, I mean, and then the other thing, like you said, I mean, th th this is cyclical, you know, um, this is this is something that astrology offers you is is you know there's that old adage about um, having the wisdom to know the the you know the the difference between the things you can change and the things you cannot. Um, Uranus give uh, Uranus astrology gives you this wonderful uh, ability to, to to fathom the the cyclical nature of time so that when you are going through something. Uh, you know, really difficult or trying or terrible. Um, you, you you can fathom that. Okay, well, this is a moment. You know, there there, there are moments that follow, and and the, the, a lot of them can be great ones. And and this must be endured and and uh, uh, addressed and coped with and 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 what have you. But it, it too will pass. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I th there is reason to be optimism uh, to be optimist rather. Um, it's just you know not tomorrow <laughs> necessarily uh, uh but in the big picture absolutely absolutely 
Um, and a quick word here before we yeah. leave today, Nick, is that yeah. I know we've been focused on the United States, but if you're to look at m most of the, you know, the major countries uh, in yeah. the world, they have a Iranian uh, placement in their own charts that also speaks of revolution, of rebellion, of, yeah. of things tearing down and changing. Talk a little bit about that before we part company today. Yeah, sure. Um, you can look at Russian history, for instance, and do a similar kind of analysis that I've done with Uranus uh, in Gemini in the United States. You can look at Russia with Uranus in Capricorn. Now, again, this is tropical Capricorn. So we're talking about the first third of the arc between the December solstice and the March equinox. Uh, from the third, last week of December until um, uh, last week of January. Um, and uh, when Uranus goes through Capricorn, um, that is always a really big defining changing moment for for in Russian history. Um, it, Uranus was in Capricorn in the late 80s, early 90s, when uh, the Soviet Union fell apart. And then prior to that, it was in Capricorn um, in 1905, as the Russian Revolution was, uh, you know, really beginning. I mean, if you know the, I mean, it, 1917 is when they succeeded in overthrowing the Tsar. But the, the things really, the revolution starts in 1905, and and that's right mm -hmm. when Uranus goes into Capricorn. So yeah, there's 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 a, a, a sort of a parallel with Uranus uh, in Capricorn in Russian history. Similarly, France um, has a whole deal with Uranus in Leo. Um, their revolution, starting in 1789, uh, uh, sees the Uranus transiting through Leo, opposite Pluto and Aquarius, which is why theirs was a little more uh, grisly, shall I say, than, than ours. Um, and of course, Napoleon had the sun in Leo, and Uranus is conjunct his sun when he suddenly uh, uh, finds himself a, you know, a, a refugee from his beloved Corsica and has to figure out what to do with his family and the uh, you know, he re-enlists in the army and, and you know, from there on things yeah, go well for a while for him anyway. France, Russia certainly have their relationship with Uranus. Britain has a similar one with Uranus and Sagittarius, tropical Sagittarius. Um, mm -hmm. the, the last time Uranus was in tropical Sagittarius was, was the, the, the era of, of Thatcher and the, the, the war, the Falklands War. Um, yeah. Before before that, it was the turn of the century and the Anglo Boer War, and where where I am right now in South Africa, um, and uh, and then before that, the prior time with Uranus and Sagittarius uh, culminated with with uh, Wellington beating uh, Napoleon at uh, Waterloo. For better or for worse, um, we we can make these similar observations with other countries and, and find them. And um, yeah, I keep looking for more. Uh, but those are the ones I've found so far. My guest today has been Nick Dagan Best. His book, Uranus USA, Astrology Looks at the First Planet and Nation of the New World. You can go to his website, nickdaganbestastrologer.com, and you can hear him on lots of the best astrology podcasts out there. Nick, great having you here today. Thank you so much for having me. For all of us here at New Thinking Aloud, for longtime host Jeffrey Mishlove, co-host Emmy Vadness, all the great volunteers here at NTA, I'm Christopher Naughton. Thank you for being with us, because you, after all, are the reason that we're here. Book 3 in the New Thinking Aloud Dialogue series is UFOs and UAP, Are We Really Alone? Now available on Amazon. You can now download a PDF copy or order a beautiful printed copy of Issue 6 of the New Thinking Aloud magazine.